Hello, everybody, and welcome to the FCL. This is the first class league kicking things off with inner geekdom in our first ever in FCL history. Double main event today. We're kicking things off hot with inner geekdom. My name is the boat, Brad Gilmore. Today, don't adjust your screens. You don't need to clean them off. They are not dirty. You are seeing clearly now that the rain is gone. Joining me today in place of the Steve's the Steve, Steph Sabra is P L. D. Plud, what's going on, Paul? Not much, Brad. I do. I want to say I'm just going to channel a little bit of steez in person. I'm wearing my world girl hat instead of the queen hat. The first time I think I've changed my hat in about a year and a half now. So she's here in spirit, um, but I'm going to do my best to fill in. Brad, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to have you here. PLD, if y'all don't know, is, is one of the people that makes this show happen on a weekly basis. Head writer, producer, so many different things. So it's great to give you a, another hat as a on-air personality today. So much did there, and I, that's, I where, that's why they call me the boat. Um, but PLD, let's talk about the match that we're about to see. We're about to see Cat the Mad undefeated in inner geekdom play, one and O, oh, going up against the Flying Cow. Now the Flying Cow, yes I know, you're making a face, I understand. Flying Cow actually battled Brendan Moore uh, Magic Brennan Moore for the opportunity to get an FCL contract. He makes his return to the FCL today under interesting circumstances. This is inner geekdom. It's not singles, so things are a little different. But we'll investigate a little bit further on the story behind the Flying Cow back here in the FCL. But PLD, talk about these two matching up against one another. One, we know what they can do in IG. The other one is a big flying question mark. I like what you did there as well. Something tells me that uh, we have to do a little bit better diligence with our, our legal team and their contracts. I think there's some things that are slipping under the radar here, but that'll be done later on. Uh, this is going to be a great match, I feel. I feel Kat has already proven herself, 1-0, one, uh, one knockout. I think she's ready to go. The Flying Cat, we don't know what he can do in the IG. He performed admirably in his loss to Brennan Marwin. It was actually a very... I was kind of upset he couldn't stick around because he definitely had uh, some great charisma, some great character. He seemed to know his stuff. So I want to be curious to see what he can do in the IG division with a different set of questions. It, it will be interesting to see, and I do agree with you on the legal team. Uh, all legal contracts have been handled by the illustrious Paulie G, if anybody remembers Paulie G um, from the movie Trivia Schmodown, I believe, was the uh, was the attorney there. So uh, we'll blame him. But nevertheless, I think the cat, the mad, came in here and really did what was expected that Cat the Mad would do. Cat the Mad, IG player, knocked it out of the park, 1-0, here we go. Flying Cow, again, a big flying question mark. Let's take a look at how we got here right now. This is Inner Geekdom, the first of two main events today. A show too big for two hours, but we got to fit it in anyway. This is Cat the Mad versus the Flying Cow. At last, the Flying Cow returns to the MC. If it isn't the cow, the flying cow? But cows don't fly. I'm a scientist and I know for a fact that cows don't fly. So... This time, I am facing off against the cat. The cat, the mad. Why a cat would want to fight a cow, I have no clue. They must be mad. By girth alone, I have the advantage. Boom. Okay, let's just accept for a minute the cows fly. Does that mean that when cows fly backwards, that they go, ooh? But this is no ordinary match, no. No, this is a match in the inner geekdom, otherwise known as id. Holy cow, I'm excited. I have been studying my tiger-striped ass off, so I really hope that you're ready because big cats eat cows. Does the cow know geek movies? Does the cow know inner geekdom? Does the flying cow know it? Moo long and prosper. May the cows be with you. One ring to moo them all. You're a cow, Harry. Moo. Eating cow. No. Jumping No. Swimming Snivel. Snorting. No. Uh, uh, flying. Yes. Flying cow. 
be careful not to get mad cow disease. <laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Philandering flatware aside, I certainly hope your fiddle skills are up to snuff, because I'm shooting for the moon. For who am I? The flying cat! <laughs>here in the FCL PLD. I am the boat, Brad Gilmore. You saw our two competitors uh, talking to uh, about one another and about what they're going to do today in our first of two main events here. Are you ready to bring these competitors in? Let's get going, man. Let's get going. I want to see these two and let's just get it on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the First Class League introducing first. <laughs> With a record of one win and no defeats, making their return to the Intergeekton division in the first class league, this is Cat the Man. There they are, Cat the Man. Cat, welcome back, FCL. Second match here in the inner geekdom division. What's going on in your mind at the present moment? Well, to be honest, I am pooping green pigs, as we say here in Denmark. So that's what's going on. <laughs> okay. Noted the green, specific color. We like it, PLD. Cat, Calm we down, saw you discussing with your fellow European invasion mates about what to go on. How is that partnership working out between you, Sonny, of course, and the dynasty, David Campbell? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have uh, plenty of time to still work on my uh, um, uh, bio, um, plants. So, yeah. Plans well, are, is, are afoot. It is. It, plans are afoot. Green pigs are uh, something. And <laughs> cat. Though uh, PLD talks about having this uh, new newly formed faction with David the Dynasty Campbell, of course, Sonny the Mic Drop Olsen, and yourself. But let's talk about your opponent today, the Flying Cow. Uh, kind of a question mark, as we alluded to in that intro there, when it comes to intergeek them play. What what is your assessment given what you were able to see of him in the singles? Well, I don't want to underestimate him, so. Uh... I think that's a, a good lesson to never underestimate someone. Um, it was a tough match, so uh, but it's it's IG is completely different. So it's uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, it's and well, he is an enigma for sure. So it's it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> that's one word you can say. That's, that's word one you word you can say. Well, from <laughs> green pigs to a blue cow. Uh, <laughs> good luck today on today's match, Cat. Thank you. All right. And we're back here, PLD and myself, introducing their opponents. Making their inner geekdom debut with a record of zero wins and zero defeats. This is the Flying Cow. Flying Cow, welcome back to the first class league. Now in Intergeekdom Play, there's been talk and scuttlebutt about your contract. We will get into that later. Right now, I want to know why Intergeekdom? Why Intergeekdom? Well, I have loved movies all of my little cow life. And these types of movies have always been amongst my favorite. And for those out he out there who might doubt the cow, I must ask, Bradward, I'm a flying cow. Do you really think there's anything I can't do? Fair enough. Wow. <laughs> 
Well, Count, you did have one match previously, obviously, in different division. What did you take away from your first match that you're going to be able to use in this match against Cap? I should have read more about Ed Harris before that match. Always a good solution. Yes. All right. In Flying Cow, uh, you're, you find yourself again in Energetum. What is your um, assessment? I know you're a cow that does their homework. They're always looking to make the right moves you cat the mad what do you think about your opponent cat well the cat the cat the mad quite the competitor they are quite fierce but i am fiercer okay okay well flying cow we appreciate your insight as always and good luck to you today Ooh. there we are all right, we bring us back. Here are both competitors here. Cat the Mad we have. The Flying Cow we have. But right now, here are the rules for round number one in the FCL's Inner Geekdom Division. Round number one works just like this. Each competitor will receive the same eight questions. They will write said answers to the questions on the whiteboards or the writing surface that they have in front of them. They will speak and reveal the answer that they have written at the end of a 15 second countdown. Each correct answer is worth one point. For the entirety of the match, you get three question repeats and one challenge per the match. And if you get all eight questions right in round number one, you are given a ninth bonus question worth one additional point. All right. And we bring back our competitors. We have Cat the Mad. We have Flying Cow. We have PLD. Cat, are you ready? Yes. Flying Cow, are you ready? Moo! PLD. Are you ready? Thank God you have the clip so I don't have to fake it. I'm ready. This one is for Steph Sabra. Let's, 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 get, 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 All right. Here we go. Round number one, question number one in Inner Geekdom. Your first question in the category of DC. Who plays TV talk show host Murray Franklin, who is instrumental in author Flex deterioration in 2019's Joker? Yeah. Did you like this film, Brad? I did. It's one of those movies that I only need to see once, but I really, really liked it. I think the film liked itself enough for all of us. And we need an answer in three, two, one, we'll start with Cat the Mad. I said Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro and Flying Cow. I also said Robert De Niro. And for Both. the cows out there, boo. <laughs> Both are correct. It is one to one as we get to question two. Glad we have our translator as always. Uh, in the category of Transformers, in how many of the Transformers films does Shia LaBeouf appear as Sam Witwicky? What do, you, what do we think of the Transformers films, PLD? Are these favorites of yours? No, they are not. I have two that I like. I like the original, and I do like the Bumblebee. After that, though, eh. Yeah, yeah. Kind of hard to get through some of those. And we need an answer here in five, four, three, two, one. Flying cow. That would be three. Three is correct three is correct thank you and cat the mad i said three three all right we're now two to two and we get to question number three uh and your question is in animated who voices the villainous doc ock in spider-man into the spider-verse doc ock making quite a Appearance this week. Yeah, yeah, apparently he's like back. We need an answer in five, four, three, two, one. Cat the Mad. I said Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn is correct. Flying Cow. I also said Catherine Hahn. All right, here we are, three to All three right. as we get to question four. Question four in the category of Wizarding World. In which Harry Potter film does Bill Nighy play the Minister of Magic, Rufus Scrimgeour? You know now, what I these love? Are films. Oh, these, all of these movies are great. But I just like Harry Potter. 
Like when people don't say the the T's. Do you know that? Like sometimes <laughs> I do like that. Uh, uh. That's a like London accent I really like. Yeah. Cockney. And when you answer in five, four, three, two, one, pins down, hands up, and we go to the flying cow. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. PLD, is that correct? That is correct. All right, Cat the Mad. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. Oh, look at that. We're all tied up still four to four as we get to question number five in Middle Earth. Who plays Theoden King in the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Now, these are movies that I love. I've watched them many, many times with my family. The trilogy, but how do we feel about The Hobbit? They're not as bad as people say they are. They're not as good. You sound like a prequel defender. And we need to answer in five, four, three, two, one. Makes perfect sense. Cat the man. Couldn't pull it. Couldn't pull it. And flying cow for the lead. That would be Bernard Hill. That is correct for one point. Now Flying Cow takes the one-point advantage. Still anybody's ball game as we get to question number six. Question number six in the categories of comic book movies. Who stars as the titular priest who disobeys church law to track down vampires who kidnapped his niece in the 2011 comic book adaptation? All right. If Steph Sabra were here, a small giggle would have come out for that question on the word titular. Well, once she said that, I found myself writing that word in more questions. And we answered five, four, three, two, one, pins down, hands up, and we go to the flying cow. That would be Paul Bettany. That is correct. Kat, what did you have? Didn't have it. All right. So it is 6-4, PLD, 6-4, 6-4, as we get to question number six in my favorite category, Swashbuckling Adventure. What? Yes. Yes, Swashbuckling Adventure is great. What is the name of Davy Jones's ship in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? Do you have a favorite one of this franchise? Uh, Yeah, so the first one. And then all the other ones I like equally. That's not a rousing answer for the rest of the franchise. We need to answer in five, four, <laughs> three. But fair. Two, one. Dead man's chest wasn't bad, and we go to Cat the Man. I said the Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman is correct. Is the Flying Cow have the Flying Dutchman? Of course we both know this. The Flying Dutchman. <laughs> flying Dutchman is correct. It is seven, five. Getting to our last question in round number one. If... The flying cow gets this one correct. He will be given a bonus question. PLD, whenever you're ready. I have to say, first, I I was scared for a minute he might actually answer the flying cow, but (laughs) he didn't, so we're here. Uh, In the category of alien and predator, in aliens, what is the real first name of the colony survivor who Ripley and crew call Newt? Deep pole. It is indeed. This might be my favorite movie in this franchise, perhaps. A lot of great action in this one. All right, we answer in five, four, three, two, one. Pins down, hands up, flying cow. Is it Mary? It is not Mary. All right, and Cat the Man. Nope. Doesn't have it. What were we looking for, PLD? We're looking for Rebecca. Looking for Rebecca. Rebecca. Everybody nods in remembrance or it was like, had no idea. We'll find out as the <laughs> round progresses. Um, Flying Cow had the opportunity for the perfect round. Didn't get the job done. It is seven to five. Two point differential. Still anyone's game here in FCL IG division. As we get to round number two, round number two works just like this in the FCL. Each competitor spins the category wheel. They will land on a category that uh, they land on whatever category they land on, they can keep it or they can respin again unless it lands on opponent's choice. Competitors will get four questions from the chosen category, each question worth two points unless you opt for multiple choice, then the value drops down to just one point. You will have 15 seconds to answer your question. In this round, if you give an incorrect answer, your opponent will be asked the question again and then they can steal it 
for whatever point values are available. Repeats, also known as the JTE rule, and challenges are still in effect here in round number two. We come back to our competitors. It is seven to five. Flying Cow, you have a two-point advantage. Would you like to spin first, or would you like to defer to Cat the Mad? I believe I will spin first, Bradward. Going to spin first. So, in the world round, are you ready, PLD? Let's give the wheel a whirl. Thank you. All right, we'll see what the wheel gods give the flying man known as the flying cow. They give him spinner's choice. Spinner's choice. Flying cow, you can choose from Batman, comic book movies, dystopian and time travel, Star Trek, Star Wars, Superman, TMNT, Transformers, who said it, or X-Men. The cow selects for his slice, Star Trek. Star Trek, all right. You will get four questions in the realm of Star Trek. PLD, the illustrious man himself, Plud, will be administering said questions in this round of Star Trek. All right. Are you ready, Flying Cow? I am. Okay, let's do it then. Question number one. Tom Hardy appears as the villainous Shinzon in what Star Trek film? That would be Star Trek Nemesis or Moo. <laughs> that is correct for two points. Blank out, good start in the Star Trek category here. We'll move on to question number two. Who was revealed to be David Marcus's father in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan? That would be Captain James Tiberius Kirk. That is correct again for another two points. Another two points for the cow. All right, how long was George Kirk the captain of the USS Kelvin for in Star Trek 2009. Let me get the multiple choice. Okay, multiple choice. Is it A, 10 minutes, B, 12 minutes, C, 15 minutes, D, 17 minutes? Is it D, 17 minutes? That is incorrect. All right, so, so now, now Cat the Mad has an opportunity to steal. Cats, just give us one second so we can uh, repeat the question and answer choices. No problem. Question is, how long was George Kirk, the captain of the USS Kelvin, for in Star Trek 2009? And the multiple choice is A, 10 minutes, B, 12 minutes, C, 15 minutes, D, 17 minutes. B, 12 minutes. B, 12 minutes is correct. So steal. one point steal there from Cat the Mad. Now 11-6, I believe. And Flying Cow has one final question in the realm of Star Trek. Yeah, this one is partially for Brad as well. What Back to the Future actor plays Klingon Commander Krooge in 1984's Star Trek III, The Search for Spock? Moo, 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 moo. Christopher Lloyd. That is correct. Another two points. That is correct. All right, so 13 to 6. 13 to 6 after the Flying Cows round. Uh, well, let's bring the wheel back up. It is Cat the Mad's turn to give it an old spin as we bring our wheel back up here. There it is. Kat, are you ready? Absolutely. Let's give the wheel a whirl. There it is. <laughs> Spinner's choice, not a bad uh, thing to land on for your very first IG match. We will see if it pays off. TMNT, Cat the Mad, would you like to keep the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or would you like to spin again? Oh, what the heck? Let's go for it. Ooh. Keeping TMNT, keeping the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I will be administering said questions in the category of everyone's mutated amphibians, favorite mutated amphibians. And your first question, 
Who plays, or excuse me, who voices Casey Jones, April's boyfriend and friend of the Turtles, who still engages in crime fighting in 2007's TMNT? That will be Chris Evans. Wow. Chris Evans is correct for two points. For two points, and we get to your next question in TMNT. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows, came out in what year? Two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen is correct, Cat the Man, uh, for an additional two points. Blowing through this round thus far, PLD in TM in T for a round where she said, "What the heck? Let's give it a shot." Here is your next question in the realm of TMNT. In 2007's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or TMNT, what Star Trek actor voices the immortal warlord Yodel who longs to be mortal? That would be Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart, thank you for the uh, distinction there, is correct (laughs) for another two points. No hesitation. And right now, it is 12 to 13. Cat the Mad having a great round here in TMNT. All right, and your final question here in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, what object did April get at the flea market that transported the turtles back in time to feudal Japan? That would be an ancient Japanese scepter. Ancient Japanese scepter will take it. And Cat the Mad also takes the lead. It is 14 to 13. TMNT, a great category for Cat the Mad PLD. Wow. (laughs) Blew right through it. I guess that is going to be a strength for anybody who's looking to play Cat in the future. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Blew through the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all available right now on streaming. I actually spent some time watching them recently as we get to now our final round here in our opening contest, our opening main event this week on FCO. It is round number three. The third and final round works just like this. Competitors will get three numbers. They will pick three numbers from three categories. You will pick between the numbers one and 20. Each competitor gets three questions. Questions are worth two, three, and five points, respectively. Each competitor will have 15 seconds to answer said question. In this round, there are no steals. There are no multiple choice. But you still have all of your JTE rules remaining and your challenge. Both player, both players have all three JTE rules and challenges. Want to make that known as we get to round number three. Okay, we are back here. Cat the Mat, you are up by one point. You are Three numbers first between 1 and 20. Let's go uh, 13, 3, and 7. 13, 3, and 7. Blind count. Hoping Teddy the cow dog doesn't let me down again. 10, 2, and 6. 10, 2, and 6. All right. So we will be beginning with the flying cow. Flying cow, you selected the number 10. And the number 10 in this round corresponds to Batman. To Batman. PLD will be administering your two-point question in Batman. Okay. In Batman. What Batman film features Uma Thurman as the villainous Poison Ivy? That would be Batman and Robin. That is correct for two points for the cow taking the lead. Cow takes the lead, and we get to now Cat the Mad, who selected the number 13 for her two-point question. And the number 13, Marvel. Marvel movies. All right, Cat the Mad, your question in Marvel. Captain Stacy is played by what actor in the Amazing Spider-Man series? Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary is correct for two points. Cat the Mad. Look at what they just accomplished. Coming right back and taking back the lead. Great job by Cat the Mad. Flying Cow. Now it is Punch time. and counterpunch. Punch and counterpunch. Punch and counterpunch. Flying Cow. Your three-point question. You selected category number two or number. The number two. 
and that corresponds to dystopian and time travel. PLD will administer your three-point question. In the category of dystopian and time travel, who plays Deacon, the leader of the Smokers, in the 1995 film Waterworld? Dennis Hopper. That is correct. Wow. Great, Great pull right there by the flying cow who now retakes the lead. We will see if Cat the Mad can do it. Cat the Mad, you selected the number three for your three point question. And that corresponds to Middle Earth. Middle Earth. Your three point question to regain the lead in Middle Earth. The Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, in the Fellowship of the Ring. Who says, this is no mine, it's a tomb about the mines of Moria? That would be Boromir. Boromir is correct, and Cat the Mad takes back the lead. It is now 19 to 18. Here's where we stand. Blind Cow has to hit his five point question to stay in the game. If he does not, Cat the Mad is your winner. If he hits it, Cat the Mad will then be forced to answer their five point question. Ooh. Here we go, PLD. It doesn't get any bigger than this. I'm flying cow. Myself. Flying cow. I can see the flying cow sweating right now. He's gonna need to change the shirt. Oh. Flying cow. Category you of selected. Mixed bag six which is mixed bag mixed bag and pld will administer your five point question category mixed bag what is the name of ellen ripley's pet cat in 1979's alien line cow has all jte rules remaining he's to, to stay in the game jones or jonesy that is correct. Wow. Wow. What a okay. great call from the cow. Great Talking pull here. Cat. And now we go back to Cat. Now we go back to Cat. CPLD, you're picking up on it here. Cat, you selected the number seven for round number three. Category seven, or number seven, corresponds to the category comic book movies. Comic book movies. And here, is your question in comic book movies. In 1994's The Mask, who plays Dark Dr. Arthur Newman, an author who Stanley Ipkiss goes to for advice on masks? We need to answer in five, four, three, two, one. Pass. And your winner, the flying cow. Move. The answer we were looking for, Ben Stein. Ben Stein was the answer. Flying Cow able to pull a tough five pointer. A great battle between both of these competitors. We're going to get to them in a moment. I'm going to talk to both of them. Uh, PLD, your instant reactions. Wow. My instant reaction is the cow came to play. It looks like IG might be his strength. He was teasing us a little bit in the singles. IG, he knew what he was doing. He barely let up. What a it powerful was, it was, pull. It was very impressive what uh, Flying Cow was able to do, especially with that five point question. Jonesy, the name of the cat of Ripley and Alien. Strong pull there. Uh, Cat the Mad, on the other on the other hand, battle back after round number one, takes the lead going into round number three, um, and then could have won the game on the five. But like we talked about before, PLD and Inner Geekdom and singles and everything, and Star Wars, you don't know what you don't know. And in this case, The Mask, that is a movie either you love and watched a million times, or perhaps you've seen it once. 
right. run and, and, and you keep it moving. Uh, obviously, probably going to get us some runs in, in Cat's household now. But nevertheless, Cat moves to 1-1. One and one. Flying Cow now 1-0, and oh, getting his first FCL win, his overall FCL record, of course, 1-1. One and one. We're going to talk to both competitors here momentarily, and I will be kicking off with today's winner, the Flying Cow. All right. Flying Cow, we will go to you in just one moment. There we are. Flying Cow! How are you doing, sir? I feel much better this time. Yeah, it's a little bit different when you get the W, of course. Uh, coming into Inner Geekdom, you are the question mark. Obviously, you know what you're talking about when it comes to Inner Geekdom movies, uh, our movies. Getting that Spinner's Choice in round number two had to be good for the old confidence there. When you got that, did you think, oh, man, I might have this game in the bag? I knew I had a good chance, but I also knew that Cat is a strong competitor, and I could not let up. I was disappointed that I let that steal go, but thankfully I was able to come back. So this game was a battle of of uh, in a roller coaster, a back and forth. I think uh, PLD put it best when he said punch, counterpunch, Cat the Mad coming back and being – they were in the lead coming into the third round for you. After getting spinners, Cat gets TMNT, takes the lead, going into the third and final round. What's going on in the cow's mind at that moment? Are you a little bit shook? You know, Bradward, in a moment like that, it reminds me why I wanted to join this league. Reminds me of a young cow who just wanted to find his place, of a young cow who wanted to find a place where his true talents would be appreciated. And now, here, in the FCL, the Flying Cow League, if you will, the cow has found his place. The cowhood dream has come true. But this is only the beginning. Oh, yes. Much more to come. Well, speaking of more to come, is there anybody who you've seen play in Inner Geekdom or any competitor right now in the first class league, be it single, Star Wars, or IG, who you would like to battle with in this IG arena? You know, the cow takes all comers. I am not afraid of anyone out there, but I will say to anyone who might have their eye on the cow. Look out. The cow is coming. And he may not be flying solo for long. Wow, okay. That is the flying cow. Today's winner. Congratulations again, flying cow. Thank you again, Bradward. All right. Have a great Tuesday, my friend. We're going to come back. That is Flying Cow PLD. I don't know what that meant by flying solo as the Flying Cow. A little concerning to me if there are multiple cows in the air. Air traffic controller might have something to say about them. Yeah, that would be kind of scary for the planes. Of, uh, hopefully we can let them know so they can be on the lookout for these uh, great large masses in the sky. Interesting stat here also on this match. Neither player using a single JTE or a challenge. Do you think that that kind of uh, had any implications on the match at all today? Well, I do think that it's always better to use it than not use it. But like we said before, sometimes you don't know it. Um, but from my point of view, you always use it because sometimes you don't know what you know unless you really dig, dig deep, dig deep. So I would always use it because you have it. Why hold on to it? But the same day, I don't know if it would have made much difference. It seemed like Cat really didn't have that final answer in the back of her head, in the back of their head anywhere. So it, probably not overall. All right, well, let's find out right now. We're going to talk to, right now, Cat the Mad. Cat, hey, I know obviously didn't turn out exactly the way that you wanted, but you played a sensational game. What are you feeling at this moment? I'm feeling fine. It's, uh, well, of course, it's always not fun to lose, <laughs> but that's not why we're doing this. It's playing to play right so <laughs> yeah you're definitely playing to play and have fun obviously you you always want to win but 
Let's talk about the five pointer. Is a mask the movie that you've seen before? Have you seen it multiple times? Was that just a complete blank spot for you? A little bit, because I've seen it as a kid, um, but I cannot stand Jim Carrey, so I haven't seen it like, since. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm hurting. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just, uh, I just, I think I skimmed the comic book because uh, there's a lot of movies and some of them I haven't really seen. And I thought, like, what's the chance of coming? I like the, I like to think in statistics because I, I am a scientist. So I was just thinking, what's like some of these? What is like the statistic uh, base of this? How, how? Yeah. What are the chances I will uh, pick comic book movies and? Then I, it happened to be my five pointer. I, I'm sure if I picked any other number, I, it's it was probably a different outcome. But it just happened to be my exact blind spot. So yeah. Bld and I just spoke about it just for a moment. Was there a reason you didn't utilize either one either of the players today? Utilize the JTE rules? Did you not think about them, or did you feel like, hey, look, I'm not going to get this regardless. I'm let me not waste my time. Yeah. That's just a waste of time because I knew I couldn't pull it. I knew um, I knew the Paul uh, Bentley answer. I definitely knew it. I just couldn't pull his name. Like I had Matthew Bellamy in my head, and it's definitely not the same person. So um, yeah, so I, I and I knew I couldn't pull it. So um, why waste anyone's time? It's yeah, no reason to. <laughs> Well, now here you are. You you you've gone down to one and one. Still a 500 record. You 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 have a win in the inner geekdom. Where do you go from here? We know you now. You're aligned with Sonny, the Mike Drop Olson, David, the Dynasty Campbell. But wh where do you, where does Cat go from here? Do you want to jump right in? Do you want to take a little time? Is there a particular player who you'd like to face? No, I'll face anyone in the IG. Anyone. <laughs> Anyone? Okay. Well, there you go. Taking on all comers is Cat the Mad Cat. We appreciate you as always. Your sensational player and personality, and we need you in this game. That is Cat the Mad. All right, PLD. There we are, man. We've talked to him. You heard what they had to say. Cat the Mad said, "I thought about the chances. What am I going to get? What you know? What I possibly get? Comic book movies." They get it for their five point question. Um, you know, sometimes, as they say, that's the way the old mop flop. That's <laughs> never quite heard that saying, but I'll, okay. I'll go with it. Maybe that's something uh, that we say in the South. I don't that know. That might be a Texas thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you're right. That is just how it happens. Of course, I feel like that's what always happens uh, when I do things. Like if I say that nothing's going to work out or I'm not never going to get that, that's going to be the question I'm going to get. So I always, that's a, just a good show for people to go and learn everything on the list, watch everything once, twice, three times until you're sure, because no matter what you think, it's gonna come back to bite you. Prepare for the worst and still pray for the best is what PLD says. That was our opening main event this week on FCL, but we have another barn burner ahead for you. Tom Chattel Bash coming back in the FCL arena. This time he's taking on Adam Gertler in singles. Adam Gertler in singles. We saw Adam Gertler before in Star Wars. Put up a hell of an effort. Now him and Chattel Bash go to battle in the FCL arena. We'll be right back here on the FCL. <laughs> 